praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. The miracle is in your hand. What you need to have a miracle is as near as your hand. And tonight, the Lord will do it for you. Now, face to face. I said face to face. Can I see you there? Where are you? That thing is coming your way. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're a wonderful God. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We exalt you. You are the miracle worker. Your name works miracle. Your sacrifice produces miracle. Your power grants miracles. We're asking tonight, O oh Lord, you will open the windows of heaven and you will bless all your people in Jesus' name. Tonight, miracle of salvation. Tonight, miracle of healing. Tonight, miracle of deliverance. Tonight, miracle of fulfilling every need in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray from your hands today to our lives, everyone. The miracle we need will come to everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight, the Lord has come to visit you. The Lord has come to bless you. And the blessing of the Lord you are going to experience in Jesus' name. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 4 all through to verse 6 Matthew chapter 11 verse 4 and Jesus answered and said unto them go and show John again those things which he do hear and see go and show John again those things which you do hear and see you can put your name there instead of John because this John the Baptist is no more here he has gone you are the one here today and the Lord said we should go and show you what we do here and what we do see so that you will know what will show you that has happened to all the people those same good things will happen to you tonight it is shown to you so that you will know this is available for you what are those things we should show you? Verse 5. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The dead, the deaf hear. And the dead are raised. The dead are restored. And the poor have the gospel, the good news, preached unto them. The Lord said we should show you the things that are happening in the name and the power of Jesus. 
in the authority of his name in the power of his spirit it says the blind are seen today we show you that so that you will know if you are blind there tonight you will see in jesus name amen he said the lame are walking if you're in a wheelchair if you have crutches if you have straw if you have one leg shorter than the other if you are maimed it says the gospel is preached unto you the good news is coming to you so that what will show you that God is doing what will show you that Christ is doing those same things will happen to you tonight he said the lepers are cleansed at that time leprosy was incurable like today HIV AIDS incurable or any other kind of problem incurable in the power of Christ in the authority of Christ in the anointing of the Holy Ghost it says all those things will happen today if you are there let me hear your amen and he said the deaf and the dumb they are hearing and they are speaking and the dead are even raised anything that is dead in your body will wake up tonight dead kidney dead livers will rise up will wake up tonight dead brain dead cells and dead nerves will have resurrection power tonight in jesus name and the good news is proclaimed to the poor i rejoice with you here tonight because wonder of all wonders something is coming your way after jesus said that then he said in verse 28 come unto me he said you have been shown what god is doing salvation for every sinner healing for the sick deliverance for those who are suffering he said all this is happening today in your own day the power of jesus is working miracles and then he said because it's happening today come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy lady and i will give you rest i will give you restoration restoration to the very presence of god restoration to the power of god restoration of your health restoration of every good thing you have lost i will give you rest tonight i'm talking to you on the wonder of god's provision the wonder of god's provision there's a wonder coming upon your life tonight that's a glorious great great thing coming upon your life tonight you will not just be hearing stories it will happen to you tonight i have tonight i will have it i said tonight i will have it you will have it in jesus name god's provision the wonder 
the supply, the greatness, the miracle, the supernatural manifestation of the provision of God in your life. Three things. Number one, God's provision for the first man. God's provision for the first man. When God created man on earth, that very first man, what was God's provision for him? That shows you God's intention. That shows you God's desire. That God God God's will. That shows you what He wants to do for the whole of humanity. God's provision for the first man. Number two. God's provision for the fallen man. Man eventually fell from where he was, the place of righteousness, to the place of sin. To the place of great favor and honor. From that place, he fell right to the ground for a place of disgrace, a place of dishonor, and a place of destitution. And yet, that fallen man, God still made provision. God's provision for the fallen man. The fall of man brought a lot of things into the world. It brought sin. Brought sickness. Brought satanic attack. Brought suffering. And shook man to the very ground. And a man that God created strong and mighty. Became so weak and so feeble. And so everybody today. Because of the fall of man. Something had happened. The spirit became weak and feeble. The soul became weak and feeble. The body became weak and feeble. Every part of man became weak and feeble. And God recognizes the feebleness of man. Number three. God's provision for the feeble man. If you are weak and feeble here tonight, something is coming your way. I said, if you are feeble tonight, if you are weak tonight, if you are poor tonight, if you are suffering tonight, if you have sorrow and shame tonight, something coming from the throne of God. The feeble man. God's provision for the feeble man. Number one. The first man. Number two. The fallen man. Number three. The feeble man. And whichever area you have. There is provision coming for everyone today in Jesus name. Jesus. You want to see the first man here on earth. You want to see what God did. What God made. The provision that God made for that man. Number one now, God's provision for the first man. And why am I reading that? You see, that man is gone. His name is Adam. Yet the man is gone, but God is still the same. Power is still the same. His love is still the same. His intention is still the same. His desire is still the same. That's why we're looking at 
what did he do at the beginning what does he want to do today what kind of provision did he have for the first man and for every man that lives on the face of the earth what provision does he want to make I want you to look at Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the face of the oh, let them have dominion over the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth God created man in his own likeness God is happy, man was happy God is holy, man was holy there's no sickness in God there was no sickness in that man God has all things the man had all things every good thing the man had God created man to have dominion and to have authority and to have power God created man to be on top God created man to live a fulfilled life. That was God's intention. And for you today, that is still God's intention. For that man there, for that woman there, that is still God's will. That you will have the provision of all things. You'll be holy you'll be happy you'll be healthy every good thing will come your way that is what God intended from the very beginning all this sorrow that's not God's will all this sickness that's not God's will all this perversion that's not God's will all this oppression that's not God's will all this affliction that's not God's will all this sorrow that's not God's will all this lack and limitation that's not God's will all the weakness in the heart and the life of man that is not God's will he wants you today to be in his likeness he wants you today to have the power have the courage have the dominion have the satisfaction have all supply and it's not just for the male it's for the female uh, look at it in chapter 1 verse 27 chapter 1 verse 27 and so it says so God created man so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him listen to this now male and female created he them he expected the female too to be happy to be holy to be healthy to have all sufficiency and tonight I come to tell you my dear sister there sadness pack your load and go sickness pack your load and go infirmity pack your load and go they said this sickness is peculiar to women uh -uh. God will single you out he will bring you out of that infirmity it will not be peculiar to you in Jesus name one sickness is peculiar to all the people 
God's provision will be peculiar to you. God's healing power will be peculiar to you. And God's gracious supernatural power promise will be peculiar to you. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. I am blessed tonight. And God bless them. You are blessed tonight. And God bless them. God has not changed. Some people feel God is cursing them. He didn't curse the first man. He blessed the first man. He says, I am God, I change not. And he sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to come and bless you. And tonight, you are blessed. He blesses us with forgiveness. He blesses us with salvation. He blesses us with eternal life. He blesses us with joy unlimited everlasting. He blesses us with healing. He blesses us with deliverance. And I say that that blessing has come for you tonight in Jesus name. I am blessed. Where are you? I am blessed. I said, Where are you? I am blessed. I am blessed. And so we are told, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, male and female. And God said unto them, man and woman. And God said unto them, both of them, He said, Be fruitful and multiply. Married woman, that's the blessing of God. Be fruitful and multiply. You will have your own miracle children. Amen. Replenish, fill up the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea. You say, Do I need dominion over anything in the sea? You know, God, just, God used the fish because the fish are the, uh, you know, the creatures that everybody knows is in the sea. Actually, man had dominion over everything inside the sea. And tonight, you have dominion over everything in the sea. Somebody said, Marie's spirit is troubling him tonight, dominion. Somebody said, mm, 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 me, Mami Water, troubling them. Mami Water, I command you tonight, get out of that place. Everything in the sea. I said everything in the sea. God has given us dominion tonight in Jesus' name. Look at what God said in that verse 29. Sorry, verse 28. Have dominion over, over the fowl of the air. Again, that is an illustration that you have dominion over the spirits in the sky. Principalities and powers in the sky. 
on the land, in the sea. God created the first man to have dominion. And tonight we come to that dominion in Jesus' name. That's the reason you need to be born again. That's the reason you need to come to know Jesus as your Savior. That is the reason you come to this new creation and then you are translated to be like the first Adam, the first man. And now, God also made provision for that man. He made a house for him called the Garden of Eden. Everything he would need, everything was there. The man had no lack. The man had no limitation. Everything God had made was for the man. Look at verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good, it was very good. Tonight, your life, good, very good. Your soul, your spirit, good, very good. Number one, God's provision for the first man. Number two, the first man fell. There was somebody who was green with jealousy, green oh. with envy. He was number one among the angels. His name, Lucifer. He was an angel of light, a cherub. He had number one position among the angels. But he fell. And so he saw that man, the first man, was now on top. Because the Bible says, Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. And so Satan began to look at man. A favored man. A man with no lack. A man with no limitation. A man with dominion. A man with power. A man with authority. A man in favor with heaven, in favor with earth. A man that had the ability to subdue all things on earth everywhere. And that Lucifer became envious and jealous. And so he said, what am I going to do? I fell, I want this first man to fall. And so he entered into the serpent. At that time, the serpent was not like the serpent is now. Beautiful, able to communicate with man. And so the serpent came to the man and asked a question. Are you happy? Are you alright? Are you satisfied? Do you think you have enough? Do you think that God has given you everything? Ah, we, we got everything. We're happy. We're healthy. We're holy. We're favored. We're gracious. We're well provided for. We're fulfilled. Ah, but you don't know something. There is something God is keeping away from you. He was telling Eve. That's the wife of Adam. If you will take this. That's what the devil is telling many people today. Are you alright? 
Are you okay? Ah, but you know, if you go and take hard drugs, then you will come hard. If you go to take that marijuana, uh, then you will know what it means to be a tough guy. If you go to take those cocaine or heroin, whatever, the devil wants you to fall further. But he did not understand. Because he didn't know that the devil was in that serpent with jealousy and envy. And so eventually Eve took of the forbidden fruit. And gave that forbidden fruit to the husband to Adam. And they fell. And God came to the garden. God said, Adam. 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 Where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid. Man was not afraid before that time. He was not afraid of God. He was not afraid of the world. He was not afraid of the sea. He was not afraid of the sky. He was not afraid of the land. He was not afraid of any spirit. He was not afraid of God. But now he had fallen. Fallen man is afraid. Afraid of everything. Afraid in the day. Afraid in the night. Afraid of demons. Afraid of disease. Afraid of men and women. Afraid of a little boy. Afraid of witches. Afraid of wizards. Afraid of yesterday. Afraid of today. Afraid of the future. Afraid of the grave. Afraid of life after the grave. Man is afraid. Afraid of everything. Because man has fallen. And so God said, Why are you afraid? Because I am naked. The glory of God that covered Adam, all that glory of God was gone. The beauty of holiness that covered the man, the beauty of holiness was gone. The grace and the robe of righteousness that covered the man, all that was gone. Without the robe of righteousness, man's spirit is naked. Without the glory, Shekinah glory of God upon you, man's soul is naked. Without the righteousness of Christ coming from Calvary upon your life, man's personality is naked. Genesis chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 15. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between the seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and uh, Bruce's heel. Maybe you don't understand that. The seed of the woman is the one that was born by a woman who had no relationship with a man. The seed of the woman is the one that was born by a virgin who had never known any man. What's his name? I said, What's his name? The one that was born by the virgin. And had not known Joseph, and Joseph had not known her. 
Born by Virgin Mary. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. That's the provision the Lord has made. The provision of Jesus Christ. The provision of the Savior. Behold the Lamb of God. Who takes away the sin of the world. That Jesus is here tonight. He is the provision for the fallen man. Behold that Lamb. He died for you. His blood was shed for you. The power of his grace will walk in your life tonight in Jesus' name. What is the provision supposed to do for the fallen man? What is the provision, listen to me, supposed to do for the fallen man? Let me ask you a question. Somebody fell inside the well. And is crying out. I fell. I fell. I am falling. I am inside the well here. Somebody up there, can you come and help me? I need provision. And then you come to the well and you throw a piece of clothes to him. Is that the provision he's looking for? Tell me, tell me. Is that the provision he's looking for? Somebody is crying out. I am falling. And then somebody comes there and says, let me hear you again. He says, yes, I'm here. Do something for me. Rescue me. I am falling. And then you throw a loaf of bread to him. That's not the provision he's looking for. And then you give him whatever. I am falling. Okay, I'm throwing catechism onto you. Take it. That's not the provision he's looking for. What provision is the falling man looking for? Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Draw him out. Take him out. Take him out of that well. What provision did Jesus come to make for the fallen man? Lift him up. Take him up. Rescue him. Get him out of that falling condition. Tonight, you are falling because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all have fallen. And because you are falling, Christ comes to make the provision for you. Says, I came to lift you up. I came to take you out of that sin. Take this man out of the well of sin. And then you bring him up now to the shore. Look at his belly. His belly is big. That dirty water is inside him. And so finish the work. Pump that water out. Let that water come out of him. Save his life. That is the number one provision that you do for him. After that now, the man says, I'm feeling cold. Pneumonia. Because I was inside that cold well. Then you can take him to the hospital if you cannot do any other thing and get him healed. The first provision that Christ has come to make is to get us out, out of that falling condition to forgive our sin and to save us from sinning and to pump that nature of sin out of us and then we are sick and he gives us healing we are oppressed and he gives us deliverance 
Tonight, salvation available. Amen. Tonight, healing available. Tonight, deliverance available. That's God's provision for the fallen man. Christ died on the cross of Calvary to take you away from sin, to take sin away from you. And tonight is your night. Am I talking about somebody there? Why is the person I'm talking about? It's coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, God's provision for the first man. Number two, God's provision for the fallen man. Number three, number three, you know it already. Can you tell me? I say, can you tell me? I say, can you tell me? Praise the Lord tonight, you are not feeble. Praise the Lord tonight, you are not weak. Praise the Lord tonight, you are not down. Praise the Lord tonight, you are not oppressed. Praise the Lord tonight, you are not tired anymore. Strength is coming. Power is coming. Authority is coming. God's provision for the feeble man. God's provision for the feeble man. Tonight, you'll be strong in your spirit. You'll be strong in your soul. Strong in your mind. You'll be strong in your body. Something is happening tonight. Over there, look at me here. Over there. I see miracle coming there. Over there, miracle coming there. I wish I could come and wake you up and touch you and say, Do you see the miracle coming? See it coming. Where are you? It's coming in Jesus' name. Wonderful, wonderful. Are you seeing me here? I said, Are you seeing me there? Do you see something is coming from here and coming over there? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Miracle. Miracle. What are you? What are you? Wonderful. Those hands will be blessed. Those lives will be blessed. Feebleness will vanish away in Jesus' name. Look at it yourself. It says Psalm 105. Psalm 105. And I'm reading there from verse 37. This is your verse. I said, This is your verse. What are you? I said, This is your verse. 105, verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. He's bringing you out with silver and gold. He brought them out, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Look at the next part. Wonderful. Look at the next part. Wonder of all wonders. Look at it for yourself. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. There was not one feeble person among their tribes. I look there. I look here. I look here. I look here. I look here. Face to face. And I say, there is not one feeble person among you. You are blind. That's past history. You receive your sight tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, it's Lumbago. 
When I bend down, I cannot get myself up again. When I sit on the chair, I cannot get up and stand and walk. You see, Pastor, this wheelchair, I've been on this wheelchair now for I've lost count many, many years. Tonight, something will come to you there. Power will come to you there. Your waist no more feeble. Your joints no more feeble. Your brain no more feeble. You will rise up in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. Mm. They did this operation for me. I thought they were going to help me. They damaged my kidney. They damaged my liver. Pastor, look at me. I see you. I see miracle. I see that there's no feebleness again. Power and authority. Strength and healing. To enter into your body right now in Jesus' name. And there was no one feeble person among all their tribes. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. He sent his word. Where is he sending the word? Who is he sending the word to? I said, who is there tonight? He sent his word. What is the word traveling to tonight? I said, what is the word traveling to tonight? What are you? He sent his word and healed them. I'm healed. I am healed. I am healed. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. Complete. Provision for the first man. Provision for the fallen man. Provision for the feeble man. You got it. I said you got it. If you got it, where are you? Joy, joy, joy tonight. Eternal life tonight. Salvation tonight. I said, where are you? I, is somebody sitting down there? Or somebody rising up there? I'm standing up. I said I'm standing up. God's provision for the first man. God's provision for the fallen man. God's provision for the feeble man. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've got it. You've got it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the good people of God said, eyes, uh, eyes closed and eyes bowed. He sent his word. That word will bring forgiveness. That word will bring salvation. And it will meet you there, reach you there, wherever you are now. He's sending salvation to you where you are. Sending forgiveness to you where you are. If you want that salvation, raise up your hand wherever you are. You want that salvation. That eternal life. That forgiveness. He sent his word and he healed them. He will heal your soul of the wounds of the fall. If you want that salvation, you want that eternal life, you want that forgiveness now, you want that grace of God now, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. It will get to you right there. If you are raising your hand, say, Amen. Now, so raise up your hand. 
Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. You made the provision of salvation for me. Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. You have made the provision of salvation for me. I fell. I was falling. You come to lift me up. Tell the Lord, I was falling. I fell into sin. You have come to lift me up. God's provision for me. God's provision for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive your salvation now. In Jesus' name. Keep up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today because you have made provision of eternal life for everyone. Lord Jesus, we thank you. You said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Rest in the soul, rest in the spirit, restoration to to the original provision of the likeness of God. All these are this of their hands. I pray that your forgiveness will come to them now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray eternal life will come to them right now. Salvation. Salvation. Salvation will come to these ones in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've got it, say amen. If you've got it, say amen. He sent his word of salvation. And you have got it. I am saved. What are you? I am saved. What are you? I am saved. That's the provision of God. And now you've got it. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. There was not one feeble person among their tribes. I am ready. You can raise up your hand. You raise up your hand. That means you are ready. No feeble person among us. He sent for this word and heal them. And deliver them from all their destructions. It's coming now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and bless your name tonight. You are a God of power, the God of all provision. And we thank you for the provision you have made tonight. Lord, I come on behalf of all your people. And I declare, and I decree, and I pronounce, there will be no one feeble person among us in Jesus' name. Lord, send forth the word of power. Send forth the word of healing. Send forth the word of deliverance. Cancel, take away all their destructions in Jesus' name. Lord, very specially now, the spirit of insanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the spirit from the river, spirit from the bush, the forest, spirit from the sky, spirit from anywhere, tormenting anyone, destroying the lives of everyone, anyone. I command you now, I have authority and dominion over you. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. For the Lord to touch their eyes right now. Blindness, I command you. Vanish away in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes. No matter for how long you have been blind. I declare miracle sight for you right now. 
Open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are lame, I command your power on their waist, on their spine, on their joints, on their nerves, on every part of them. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any swelling in their body, affecting their kidney, affecting their livers, affecting any part of their body. All that disease, I, I put all you together, bundle you together. Come out in Jesus' name. Anyone has I any mean, internal disease, cancer, cancer, ulcer, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, whatever name you are called, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray a creative miracle that what was not in the body before that needs to be there, create it now in Jesus' name. Any part of the body that is not well formed, Lord, I pray do a creative miracle right now. Touch them transform them and do in them what will complete their body make them whole in Jesus name every cause in your life I destroy every yoke in your life I take away Lord I pray miracle everywhere healing everywhere deliverance everywhere right left center forward at the back confirm it right now no feebleness no sickness no affliction no infirmity touch them now heal them now deliver them now confirm the miracle we thank you because we know it's done we know it is done I know it is done in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen, you got it. Amen, you got it. The saint is what and heals them. If they sent to you, you have got it now. You are blind before, open your eyes, now you can see. You are lame before, rise up, now you can walk. Deaf, dumb, now you can hear. Something in your body that wasn't there before, that you are not well formed, now it is there. A great miracle has taken place. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You got it. As you discover it, you will rejoice and we will rejoice with you. Everybody said Amen. Praise the living God. I want to testify the goodness of the Lord, what God done to me this night. So, since 1992, I was born. I was suffering from ear drop. I, I couldn't know how to, just to express it in my life. I was wandering from one hospital to another, but the problem was not availed. So, I came to this program this night and God delivered me for the eardrop. When the eardrop started, in fact, all this, uh, this manuscript that I hold, I can even put it, the thing will be so much scratching me. But God delivered me in this night. Thank you. One, one nine. Clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus. One nine, one Since 1972. And the problems ended just tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. Your name and where you come from. And tell us what the problem has been. And what God has done for you now. Praise the Lord! Brethren, I'm very, very happy to stand before this crowd and to share this testimony of what, of what the Lord did for me in the life of this, my baby. 
By the grace of God, my name is Sister Obasi Martina. And my, my child's name is Victory Obasi. This girl, I gave birth to her 2008. And after some months, she started having cough. So I thought that it was just an ordinary cough associated with child's growth. I got a drugs, a cough syrup I applied on her. After some time, the cough came again. And from time to time, it will not attack her in a serious way that she will be both vomiting, she will have fever in a very, in a very high degree. And then we were told that the only way of her survival is that she will be operated on. And then when the details of how she, the thing will undergo was given to me, one, I was told that it must be an expert that will carry out the operation. And that two, that there will be no penetration of external air. If it does, she will die. Then we are hoping on God. So this year, what God did is that this problem that she has been having acute pneumonia for seven years now, when GS prayed, she became completely healed. Since then till now, we've not gone for drugs again. She's completely delivered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She will praise God and say. Patron, praise the Lord. My God will praise my cheers for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Seven years problem requiring surgery vanished. At the prayer of the man of God. Children of God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Regina Carlo. I'm living at Udensu Quarter. My testimony goes like this. This is almost four years. I'm suffering for marine kingdom torment. So the year that me and my husband were dead, I did not know that he has a girlfriend. And she, he did not even know that he's from marine kingdom. There is something the woman will fuck with my body. My body will begin to smell seriously. And something will be moving in my body as an object. People will begin to say, I have HIV, that I have uh, eaten somebody money and I refuse to pay that the person uh, 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 put a, lay a curse on my body. But it's only God know that what I was suffering. Every day I will be praying. When I go to hospital, when they check, they will not discover anything. I keep on praying to my God. I don't know that I will make a day like this, that my Heavenly Father will deliver me from that bondage, that I think that there is no hope for me again. But my God has made a hope for me today. And that God that did it for me, I know it will be permanent for my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Jam your hands together. Deliverance from mommy water spirits is gone forever, and all the other things connected with it. 